In this video, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to connect to your PLC. Now, what I'd like to do in this video is I'm gonna go really deep into it, and then in the next video where we actually do an activity where we program a, an actual program, I'm gonna do it all over again. But this one's gonna be the one that's gonna be a lot more in detail on the actual connection process. The other one's gonna be talking a lot more about the programming process. But I am gonna to try to show you it again in the next video because this is honestly the most difficult part. Most students really struggle with getting connected and they spend a lot of time fighting with it. So I don't wanna do, I don't wanna have that happen moving forward. So I really wanna spend some time talking about it. So the first thing that we're gonna to have to do is create a physical connection. Number one, or I guess the first thing is you wanna make sure your PLC is turned on. The PLC has to be on for you to connect to it. The next thing is we're gonna take a cord that's called an RS-232 co serial cord. And that, it becomes important why you know the name in a second once we start trying to connect to our PLC. But this is the cord we're gonna be using. You see them all over the place in the shop. They're kind of, they're kind of easy to figure out because it's a USB on one side and then we have this round serial cord on the other. And I doubt you can see it, but it will shape, be shaped exactly like the plug-in here on the side. Now this PLC can be connected to in two different ways. You can do it ethernet or serial port. I know there's not very much that's uh, serial port anymore, but we're gonna use it. So what we're gonna do, and we'll, we'll get into the ethernet probably way later down the road, all right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our serial, we're gonna go ahead and plug it into the side. Be careful that you don't plug it in the wrong way. It has to be clocked specifically, and you could crush the pins or you could damage the actual port to get into our PLC. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your USB and you're gonna plug it into your uh, computer here. I don't know why, but I usually go to the one over on the right side here. Um, it's just, maybe it's more out of habit than anything else. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you my screen and we're gonna talk about the whole process from start to finish. All right, so now that we are up and running and we're on the computer, we gotta do one major thing. And that is we have to figure out what COM port we have hooked our RS-232 cord into. Now if you've already, if you're using a COM or a serial to serial, I don't believe you need to do this. Like it should just kind of come up. But if you are using a USB to the serial connection, you are gonna need to figure out which COM port you are using. Um, and it's actually really pretty simple. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go down here to the search bar. You're gonna go into device manager. I just start typing it in here and it should pop up. We're gonna go ahead and click on it. This little warning right here probably won't come up on any other computer, but how it works here at the school is you guys do not have admin rights and you're not admin, so it's telling you you're not an admin and you can't make any changes. Or if you wanted to make changes, you need to go log into your admin administration account, okay? So just hit okay, and it'll pull up the ta or device manager. Over here, you're gonna see this little arrow. If you click on it, it's gonna show you all of the ports or what is connected into all of the ports. Remember we talked about right this one right here, we talked about how the RS-232 is a serial to USB connection. So we're pretty much gonna go find the COM port that is a USB to serial connection, and that's the one we want. And it is telling us that it is on COM port number four. Okay, so remember that, you might write it down or whatever just to be safe, but um, just kind of remember that and you can always come back and look at it. Um, this isn't super important for the class because what's gonna happen is you might do this once, but then you'll kind of always plug in your RS-232 cord into the same, um, to the same port so you'll know it's on COM port four always, okay? But when you're actually at work, maybe you will need to go find that COM port. This is how that okay so let's go ahead and we'll exit this because we got all of our information and the first thing that we want to do is go into RS links classic and this should just take a few seconds to upload or load but one thing that is very important RS links is a communication path for the RS logics and the PL or and the PLC so the RS links, like I said, it's just gonna be a communication. We're just setting up the, the process for it to communicate. The reason we have it as a computer or as a separate program is there's multiple different ways to con connect to a PLC. There's also, you could also have multiple PLCs. 
So this really is the, the, the program for you to pick which PLC you want to talk to. We're going to keep it super simple in this class and only ever have one PLC. Um, and also we're going to kind of use serial connections so that again will make it easy. All right. So what we're going to do to start setting up that communication path is we're going to come over here and we're going to click on communications. We're going to go ahead and we're going to configure our driver. Now you can see right here we have a program that's already running or a driver that's already running. We're going to click on it and I never like to use somebody else's drivers. I always come in and delete them all out. I've noticed some problems because students will end up getting four or five of these drivers in here. Stop them. It just says stop the status and go ahead and delete them. All right. Do not worry about this messing up anything. Um, this would be a very simple process. You're going to do this every day when you first come in. You're going to configure drivers. You may even have to do it multiple times if you, you know, in the process of turning off your computer or turning off your uh, PLC and stuff to wire things. So it get really comfortable with this process. Okay. So just delete out any of those drivers that are not yours. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit this drop down and we're going to go find the communication path that we have used. You can see you can have an Ethernet device. It can be all sorts of stuff here, okay? But we used an RS-232 DF1 device. So we're going to click it and then we're going to hit add new. We're really just letting it know how we've connected to it is all. Um, right here is asking you to name that driver. Naming your driver is not really important. Um, this could become very important if you had a bunch of different PLCs to have them named separately, but we don't. So if you want to just leave it the default, that's totally fine. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to just pop up this screen. And this is the actual configuration screen. Up to our, on our top left here, you're going to see that it's asking for which COM port we need. And we, we already went and found that it is COM port number four. We're going to click that. And then the rest of all these fields are going to kind of fill themselves out. Not, I guess not kind of, they are going to fill themselves out. You should never have to adjust any of this stuff, okay? That's something is very wrong if you do. We're going to hit the auto configuration. Now, this is very important. If you just hit OK and you don't hit that auto configuration, it will never create a connection, okay? Now, it was a little bit touchy and I accidentally hit that button. So, what it's saying is it is an auto configuration is successful. And you know, I want you to notice how fast that happened, all right? If you go ahead and you click, and we'll do one that, like, that is not going to work. So, let's go to COM port 3 and we'll hit auto configuration. See how slow it's going? And it's just trying to find things, it's trying to work. It's never gonna work, so if you're seeing this, something is wrong. You could potentially have a bad communication path or you're probably using the wrong COM port, okay? So, if you're seeing that, now you know what it looks like to not work. Now, I also wanna show you what happens if we go to COM port five. COM port five does not exist on this computer, so if we hit auto configuration, it's unable to open this COM port, okay? So, just hit okay and then go look up what your COM port was in Task Manager, or in Device Manager, I'm sorry. We're gonna to go to COM port four, we're gonna hit Auto Configuration, it's gonna configure, it's gonna give us a successful configuration, we're gonna hit OK, and we're done. This page here does not need to stay open, you can hit the Close button, or you can hit the Exit button. I'm just gonna hit the Exit button, and now we can come over here and we can see that we have our, this is our communication path right here. If you wanted to name it, it would pop up with whatever name you had. And you can see this screen right here, or this little image is actually moving around, telling us that we have good communication. You can see that this is my computer, and it does not have a big X on it, so we know it's good. And this is our PLC, and it does not have a big X on it, so we know that's good, okay? If I was to unplug it right now, which I actually will do, that's us, that's it, the computer telling us that it's been unplugged. All of a sudden, we're going to see this big X here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it back in, and we can sit here and wait, and it may or may not reconnect. More than likely, it will not reconnect, so we will need to go back into our communications, configure our drivers. We're going to go ahead and this, this uh, device that we already had, or this driver, we're going to hit the stop button. We're going to go ahead and delete it and we're just gonna restart the process, which after you've done this a bunch of times, this is super fast.
okay? You're going to come in every day and you're going to do this a couple times probably. Auto configuration, done and done. And now we are back to where we were. All the communication is set up nicely. Now the program needs to be up and running for us to have a communication path. If you exit out of this program at this point, it will remove the driver and will no longer have a communication path. So I'm just going to minimize it and you're always going to be running that, okay? Now the purpose of this video in this section was really just to teach you how to link up with the PLC. But or and the next section is really going to be about RS links. But I wanted to spend a second talking about RS links because to actually view and see the program, we're going to need RS links, okay? Or RS logics, I'm sorry, I keep saying that wrong. Um so this is our this is our computer or our program. I've already moved around some of these tabs. You can take these and you kind of drag them around if you wanted to change how this looks. I personally would say I like this the best, but that's just me. The first thing that you're going to do is you might come in here and um, you're going to go who active go online. Maybe. Okay. It's going to give us the communication paths. You can at this point possibly even go click the one you want. So this is the one we're working with. Hit OK. We're gonna hit that one. Hit OK. It's going to pop up your your program and it's gonna be running, okay? So we can, at this point, this is the actual what's on the PLC. There's nothing on the PLC. I've shot this video a couple times um, and I don't have anything on there, okay? So if we were online and we wanted to go offline, we're just going to go to this drop down tab here, hit the offline button, and we're done. Okay? So this is back to the programming mode of RS Logics, okay? If we click this button again, we have some other options. So you could go online if you'd like. Um, if you go online at this point, you do need to have a file uh, in place to go online, so that, um, meaning that you have to have a file of what is on the PLC. I already had one before, so it didn't ask me. If you go to the download button, this one would be primarily for if you programmed a new program and you wanted to send it to the computer. Literally, this is what the don't downloading is for PLCs. You're going to take a, a program from your computer and you're sending it to the PLC. And then last, you're going to have an upload. Um, button here. Now uploading is if you wanted to take a program from your PLC and you wanted to move it to your RS links and you wanted to view it or you wanted to make changes to that. So it's going to have you, it's going to ask you to save it, it's going to go through that whole process. The reason I'm telling you this is just because actually to finish the communication process and get online you're going to need to do one of these, alright? Primarily if you're going to do troubleshooting, uploading is what you're going to be doing. I'm going to go ahead and hit the upload button. It's going to walk through the process and it's going to take us. It's going to ask us if we want to go online or hit yes and we're done, okay? Now something very important that I want to point out is when you're online, right here we're going to have this little ladder spinning around to kind of let us know that we are online. It's also going to come up here and it's going to tell us remote run, all right? So like I said, in the next video, I'm really going to be kind of getting on. We're going to program our first uh, actual lab, but I wanted to get you started where you could connect. So go ahead and move on. I want you to go and uh, get connected or even go ahead and get started on the, the next tab or the next assignment. And we're going to have you connect and then we're going to program. Okay. So go ahead and move on.